As you may know, here on 207, we are interviewing the candidates running this year for major office in Maine. In the first district race for Congress, there are three candidates. The independent is Marty Groman. Groman manages a roofing manufacturing company and is a state representative from Biddeford serving his second term. Last year, he left the Democratic Party and became an independent. He's with us now. Thanks for coming in. Good to have you here. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, good to be back on 207. I think one thing that all independents, Republicans, Democrats would agree on is that Congress right now is a mess. Why do you want to be a part of it? Yeah, I totally agree. Congress right now is at a standstill. I mean, the Republicans and Democrats are locked in this kind of partisan cage match. I mean, the whole thing is kind of like professional wrestling. And I just think it's time uh, that we get an independent voice down there that will represent Maine people and not big money political party bosses. There's no question that that Congress has a wealth of problems, but if you were to be elected, you would go in as an independent, so you've yep. got no party affiliation, therefore no party clout, nobody looking out for you, and you're a freshman with zero seniority. How could you be effective? You know, as an independent voice in Congress, I expect to be extremely effective on behalf of the Maine people. I will not be answering to a political party. I'll be answering to the people of Maine. And look, yes, we are looking at a closely divided House. I think it's probably going to be split right down the middle. And I expect my vote to be needed, possibly even to elect a speaker. You have said in the past that the most pressing issue we face in Maine is the opioid crisis. It's not new, and yet not much progress has been made on it. What do we need to be doing differently? You know, I'm super active on this. I'm on the Criminal Justice Committee in the Maine Legislature, and I've seen how affecting it can be. And I just saw a stat today uh, that a Mainer, uh, it dies every day from an opioid overdose. And I've been working really hard on this. And one of the specific things that I've been doing is these recovery workforce jobs fairs. In fact, we have one coming up on October 11th right here in Portland. I'm so excited to be able to do that because I think on the road to recovery from the brain disease of substance use disorder, three things are really critical. Having health care, having a place to live, and having a job. And as a manufacturing company employer myself, I understand how to work with employers to help people get back on their feet. And so running those recovery workforce job fairs is something I've been doing. And I'm so excited to be able, it's just, it's so moving to help people get back on their feet and find a job. And these are high potential people. And I don't think employers are looking for cookie cutter resumes anymore. They're willing to look at people for the potential that they have. And it's super rewarding to be able to help them. All right, let's talk taxes. Federal government running a huge deficit, which isn't something we normally see when the economy is doing well. Would you support raising taxes to address the deficit? You know, we've got a lot of work to do to keep the economy booming. And we're on our way, but we haven't reached everybody that we can. But I think as we continue to push and we continue to grow the economy, that's the best way to take on the challenges that the country so have, would to you have raise a booming, taxes? growing economy. Uh, no, I, I believe that uh, uh, supporting growing main businesses and jobs in the economy is the best way to spread the benefits to everybody. How would you do, deal with the deficit? It, because what the Congressional Budget Office, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says is that the deficits are going to continue to rise as far as the eye can see. And this gets the U.S. into the same kind of territory where Greece has been, where Italy yep. is now, where you just have these monumental deficits that have real consequences. So how would you address the U.S.'s inability to come even close to a balanced budget? You know, we've, we've got constant work to do on these kinds of things. And I think we, we have to start working together. We can't fix partisanship by sending more partisans to Give Washington. Give us one specific step. You know, we have worked hard to get the economy to where it is. We have much further to go. We've got to keep working together to support our jobs in the economy. Imagine what we would be saying if the economy was cratering right now. Let's keep pushing. And you know I'm what? I'm going to try one more time. One specific step to address the deficit. The specific step to address the uh, deficit is to keep the economy growing and booming. That's what keeps the revenue coming in that will take on this critical problem. And I've got to tell you, if we keep going into our partisan corners, we're not going to be able to come together to get this work done. You know, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, that was 35 years since we had done comprehensive uh, tax reform. 
I mean, it shouldn't take another 35 years for us to take the motions to take on the deficit. You know, we can't just keep retreating into our partisan corners and making sure the other side doesn't get a win. We've got to have some independent voices that will actually get things done. A somber anniversary was observed just this week, one year since the shootings in Las Vegas. 58 people killed, more than 800 injured. Hmm. The shooter used bump stocks to, in effect, convert his rifles into automatic weapons. Should bump stocks be banned? You know, y you look at these types of incidences, and, and uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm blessed. I have a wonderful wife and two young children, and, and uh, put them on the school bus every morning. And, and you hate to think about, you know, where these types of incidences happen, and they're just awful That's a simple to hear question. about. Should bump stocks be banned? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to leave it there because we're out of time. Marty Groman, independent candidate for Congress in the 1st District. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate yeah, you being Rob. with us. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Thanks, Amanda. When we